Welcome to the Cat Timf Show. I am Cat Timf. I have my favorite person in the whole universe here with me, Joel Pavelski. Yo, what's up? Jay Candy, my best friend in candy the man. universe, the Candy Man. We're eating brunch right now. Yeah, or some kind of approximation of it. We've got this amazing Greek yogurt that I brought from my neighborhood. It's like from this really hipster place. I brought a single kebab, <laughs> and it's uh, it's very, very, very. Uh, very nice. We got a bottle of champagne. We have a bottle of champagne. Oh, yeah. And so, a little bottle of Sutter Home Wine. Joel, you may have seen from my um, my Instagram, he's the dude that I'm always with <laughs> that looks like a gay Johnny Bravo, like a skinny gay Johnny Bravo. But actually, maybe you don't look gay, apparently, because people comment, fuck that Oh, dude. all the time. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> like is, is that your boyfriend? He's a lucky man. And it's like, no, not what's going on. Yeah. Or I'll be like sitting on you. I'll be like, he's so lucky. I'm like, no. so lucky. No. He doesn't. I'm terrified um, and petrified of your genitals. He Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> he doesn't. I want to stay as far away from them as possible. He doesn't like vaginas or boobs, but I have boobs. I mean, it's all I a scale. Boobs. It's all a scale. I have boobs, sort of. <laughs> sort of. Sort of, yeah. Boobs. I mean, kind of. But it's I kind do... of the way that like my my back connects to my legs. Like I don't have an ass. It's kind I, of like your. <laughs> I do situation. wear. I do wear a bra. Okay, but you know, I got. See, I don't say, have that. Guys can't do that. Why is finding a great fitting, comfortable bra so hard? All right. There's a Third Love. It's an exciting it's new lingerie brand that uses real women's measurements to create better fitting bras. There's a hundred percent fit guarantee. Re returns and exchanges are always free, which is awesome. And you know. That they stand behind this bra so much that they're willing to let listeners try the bra for free. Just pay for shipping. You wear it for 30 days. Go to www.thirdlove.com slash cat to get started. K-A-T as in me. You can try this t-shirt bra for free for 30 days. www.thirdlove.com slash cat. Bra, bra, bra. If you don't love it, send it back for free. <laughs> Start your free trial now. All right, was that was that good? Did that I do was a good great. job. I yeah. feel like I've I, never worn a bra, but I feel like if I did, well, maybe I have. I don't know. Maybe I, I feel like yeah, you don't know. I feel <laughs> I feel like you must have. I feel like uh, um, Rush Limbaugh does a great job of weaving in uh, spots, and I'm not. Do you think very... he's going to that website right now? Do you think he's typing that into his computer? Oh, I don't Just... know. I, so I'm looking at my computer bra. right now, and I have Keith Morrison is up. This is a great <laughs> screen grab. I love Dateline. For those, oh my of you, god. That don't know. The last time uh, we watched Dateline together, was it Dateline or was it oh, another it crime was show? It was Vegas. Dateline for like six hours. Yeah. We, were, we, were, we went to Vegas for five days, which is a oh, horrible way idea. Too Nobody long. should ever do that. Yeah. I had never been before. And when I told people that we were going to Vegas for five days, they're like, are you insane? You're going to die. <laughs> and I was like, no, we'll be fine. It'll be fun. We need like a real vacation. They're like, no, tops go for two, three days. It was like, whatever. Screw you guys. We're doing it. That was, yeah. By the fourth day, we were lying on the floor moaning. Uh, I had we're wontons like, <laughs> in the jacuzzi. <laughs> And I was like, what? Watching Dateline. I mean, like, is this, is this working? Are we on? I don't even know I don't know have what's anything in my on. headphones. Is it working? All right, cool. Yeah, I'm not hearing my headphones. Me neither. But that's all right. Um, I already know what I sound like. <laughs> um, well, the, the, the first, we went there to go, to go see Sabrina. The yeah, first night, friend. the first night you, I mean, God, we almost got married the first night. Oh yeah. I don't even really remember what happened. I think that's probably what's supposed to go down in Vegas. We're probably not supposed to be talking about it either. Isn't that like the rule? I don't know. Oh yeah. What happens in Vegas stays there. Well, that's not true. Well, that's not true. That's I don't not feel true. like you can't tie us down. You can't tell us what to do. Well, Joel and I <laughs> have decided like a long time ago that we were going to, um, maybe like get married someday oh yeah as soon as we decided to go to vegas we were like this is definitely the night that it is happening i know and it didn't happen and i, I was a little, i was a little upset i was a little disappointed i was kind of like we didn't even visit i don't think uh, yeah, i know a, like a wedding chapel or something we with did like it. an old lady with like really red hair and bright lipstick being like are you sure here because for the longest time right we've been saying essentially that like we're the bestest of friends and we like don't ever want anybody to come between us so we would just get married mm -hmm. and we would have a sexless marriage and we right. would have two wings of a huge enormous mansion right. each to our own you in the east and me in the west and then we'd meet every morning at the pool for brunch joel has always been like so we went to college together we went to Hillsdale Star, college yep in michigan very, very conservative it was very conservative and i was like you know obviously the one really super out flaming homosexual on campus which was really fun right i always tell people that Hillsdale is kind of the college where like the William F. Buckley's of the world tell other people to send their kids while they send their kids to Yale and Princeton, yeah. which is not well, a slap at Hillsdale in any way. I love that place. And it yeah. was super formative. Yeah. Um, everybody there is uh, really smart and wonderful. And it was very, very dear to me. 
Um, well, they were very, very dear to you because I think that they were the first gay person that you never met <laughs> and they yeah. wanted. No, it was I mean, funny though. After, after I was there and like actually vocal about me being a gay person, just like existing as a gay person, all of a sudden they started popping up else like <laughs> everywhere. Like, I, Oh, I, Oh, surprise. Like I there know. are other gay people in the world. I know. I remember that. Like that one time we were, at, uh, <laughs> you know, that, uh, we had a friend say, I just saw, I think I saw, I saw this guy at Urban Outfitters that I think was gay. Like, you guys should meet. And it's like, and it was like, <laughs> that wasn't even a, an, an attempted hookup in any way. You didn't like have a friend that you like right, thought like exactly. I might vibe with. You like, were like, I saw a gay person a, a, a guy at that Urban gay. Outfitters. But, a guy that was probably gay at Urban Outfitters. Like, do you guys want to date? Like, like, should you go talk to him? Like, like what the I hell are you talking about? I saw a guy in Target about? that looked like he was straight. So you should get, you know, I but mean. But no, for some of those people, I probably actually was like the first like out gay person person that they right. had talked to who is like the way that I am so I mean, well I mean I, you know sad sad for them they definitely very... probably knew some gay people that just didn't actually say they that they were well, gay you you uh you you uh, kind of capitalized on that right you had some people that said they were straight but then they like hit you up on <laughs> what? the down low what are you talking about absolutely not you know what I'm talking what? about <laughs> it's fine so oh my gosh Joel you're also a treehouse boy. <laughs> I'm also a treehouse boy. Yeah, that's been it's been a crazy couple of weeks. I think the New York Times totally, uh, and maybe the most ridiculous mm -hmm. um, piece of millennial bashing I've ever read in my life in the New York Times a couple of weeks ago mm -hmm. um, wrote based on an essay that I wrote on Medium about getting burnt out and jumping on a plane and going home on the 10th anniversary of my brother's death. <laughs> yeah, your um, brother's death. By my the brother's way, death. Yeah, not easy. That. Basically, the the article, the way that it talked about that experience for me uh, was that like I was just like skipping out of work to go like have fun and like and build a tree and build house. a treehouse and hang out at home. Like no mention of the fact that like it was actually my essay that I wrote on Medium was about a lot more than that. It was about grief and it was about um, you know the unbelievable expectations that are being placed on young people in a twenty four seven work environment in startup land. I mean, it wasn't like you know it didn't I, even. I didn't mention, even mention it. the fact that it was like the the anniversary of your little brother's sudden but tragic I, I, death. I just think that that was an article that the writer went into the experience right. knowing the story that he already wanted to write, which I mean, the New York Times style page is kind of legendary um, for writing those kind of tone deaf pieces being right. like, especially about millennials. And, you know, there was a sentence in the piece that um, this reporter wrote that was like, you know, millennials are always known as being like lazy and entitled and hard to handle at work. And it was like, um, just a huge, poorly presented, dumb way of actually looking at the world and at yeah. like an entire generation of people. I mean, plus you're, you're one of the most hard, hardworking people I've ever met. Look at this. This little mini bottle of wine has a cat <laughs> hair stuck to it. Oh my God. Look, it's Is a little jeans, jeans there from my cat jeans. I mean... God, yeah. Well, he likes you now ever since... Somehow I won him over. Somehow I won him over. It was pretty incredible. Well, he didn't like you because you chased him around my apartment naked that one time. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> no, stop. I'm going to fully deny that. <laughs> that's all right. I'm, I, I, these are things I would make no, up. No, when was it? I was staying at your apartment yeah, when you were gone. Yeah, I wasn't gone. there. You I wasn't there. there. He was staying at my apartment. I, would I was never, like, I don't want to see him naked ever. I raided your liquor cabinets. And I yeah. uh, was just like wanting your cat to love me. I was like looking for something fun to do and watching TV was boring. So I chased your cat around. It was my your roommate's apartment. liquor cabinet. Um, <laughs> there was a time when I, I, I would uh, just like eat all of her popsicles and then I'd buy her new popsicles every day. But one day she was coming home from Utah. Were they like the ones that you like squeeze up the from the bottom? Ice. The best ones. She was coming home from Utah. I thought it was like in the middle of the day. I didn't re realize it was in the morning. I had like a little bit of a Sunday fun day and I came back with my friend Sean who I did comedy with and I toured with Pablo with him. Um, he opened for Pablo Francisco for a while and uh -huh. rocked along. And, um, and I, so we made this video of me dancing around with the popsicles. May or may not have gotten a lot of colorful popsicles all over the- I remember the, that video. The, the, yeah, yeah. All over the carpet and all over the- and we made this video called It's Popsicle Time, it's bitch. So dumb, where I'm, like, it's so dumb, but it's But it's everywhere, but it's scrubbed from the internet. So I really hope so. It, it's really scrubbed. <laughs> but, like, so she came back, and she was, like, it was, like, a cat I've had it with you moment. <laughs> where she was, like, you know, it's everywhere. There's there's, there's cold food coloring everywhere. And I'm, like, Bleh. We've all had moments with our but, roommates. But, but then I really wanted to post this video. So, like, right after we got this fight, I posted the video on Facebook of me dancing around, <laughs> like, with the popsicles. How did she react to that? Did you ever hear anything about it? Or did know. she just totally passively really aggressive and talk to about, me it? about uh, it? Yeah. Um, I'm a horrible roommate. Oh, yeah, I believe that entirely. Actually, I hooked you up with one of our mutual friends to be yeah. a roommate one time. And he's a wonderful person. He's my current roommate. Right. He's amazing. He, like, cleans up after himself. He's very careful. You are not like that. <laughs> no, I, I'm, I'm not. But now that I live alone, um, I think that I'm a much better roommate because if I have people over, 
Yeah, I, how's I your life different now? Well, it's I'm cleaning. Want to be honest? I'm a horrible person, and um, <laughs> if I would have people over before when I had a roommate and it was messy, I'd just be like, "Ugh, my roommate." <laughs> 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 That's incredible. Now you have nobody to blame I have it on. Ownership you can't of say my that, like, own space. Yeah. So I have to actually clean my space. I really want to start living alone. Not no like shade whatsoever to any of the roommates that I've had, but like when I moved into the city, like I was sharing a bedroom with our mutual friend who was also once your yeah. or is now your roommate. She or was, was my your roommate. roommate. Yeah. Um and so like for me, like that leveling up to like having my own bedroom was like a big moment. Then like I think leveling up to like living alone is the next like big milestone for me. But the problem is I worry if I would actually be able to go back to having a roommate afterwards. I feel like once I take that punch, like I'm never going to go again. back. Yeah. I'll never have a roommate again. I don't know how I do. I just dance around. It's mo it's the most wonderful thing ever. I have no <laughs> idea. But I, I mean, think I would just get cabin fever. Like I would need somebody to like actually talk to and deal with my craziness sometimes. I can just like manipulate people into coming over. Generally. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I feel like I'm number one on that list. Actually. You are. I'm like, I, need <laughs> I can always tell when there's a cat text that's like, yeah. uh, well, sometimes. I, I have offer, two free hours before I actually want to be sleeping. Maybe. Sometimes I <laughs> offer to seamless people. I do that a lot. I'm like, I will order you an Uber and seamless you to my my place. And that generally works. I'm going to be such a good cougar someday. Oh my God, absolutely. I'm gonna, I'm gonna you already so, have all the skills worked out. I'm going to have so many pool boys. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be okay. That's okay. They'll know what's up. They will. I mean, okay. So, I mean, this is this is great to see you on a Sunday because like now now you have like, Joel has a boyfriend now. <laughs> And Why do I, you say like that? Huh? Because I've been. He's because, pretty wonderful. Because I that like I mean well because basically because I don't agree with you being gay. I'm like, yeah, obviously, <laughs> of course. That's why. <laughs> and I'm gonna try to send you to uh, pray the gay away camp. And this is really put up. One of my biggest regrets is that I actually never went to one of those yeah. because now I don't have like a memoir to write about it. That's what I'm. Oh God. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I really want to know what happens at a pray the gay away. I mean, oh, I guess I'm sure you pray I do. The gay I mean, away. yeah, I just probably didn't tell those people when I was growing up. Like, I mean, I'm telling you. Like, I was really gay when I was growing up. Like, I was like, mm -hmm. I was like looking at internet porn of like dudes doing it at like 12 years old. Like, I knew I was gay from like the day I was right. born. That's a definite sign. <laughs> <laughs> I think, sorry, mom. Hey, don't listen to this. No, I guess she won't listen, but like, didn't I she? I mean, they know. Like, my, it's, it's a thing. Everybody knew. It's yeah. not a big deal. So, like, yeah, there was never any point for me to go to a, any kind of like weird institutionalized BS camp. Although, I'm sure that my mom, like, to this day, probably like tries to pray it away in her like personal life. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry about it. I just, when I do these podcasts, I just assume no one listens. And if they do, they can deal. <laughs> like, if you don't love me for li for me, then Yeah, if I've like, said anything horrible, you can just, like, edit it out, right? Like, no. am, I, am I allowed to say the word fuck? I already am, have. Am I, I said tits already. Am yeah. I allowed to say, like, cum dumpster? I, <laughs> yes. Okay, cool. Um, uh, as long as cool you're not chill. calling me one, <laughs> then you can say it. Um, no, but, but because, you know, I, uh, Joel and I, we spent a summer together where we, like, hung out every single I mean, moment. just one. I feel like we've done that so many yeah, times, but true. definitely there was one. When was that summer? The, in DC, when we first like became bestest of friends, and I thought I was like, you could I'm okay. Every single day, you would come to my apartment where we would steal my roommates' beer out of their little fridge. They stole one of my Rolling Rocks one time. So you justified for the rest of the summer, anytime you wanted it, taking any of they their drank booze. They my Rolling Rock one time, one time. They were really nice people, but I'm sure they did not feel the same way about us. No, I had to walk to the subway station and guide you to my to my house three blocks from the subway every single day because you could not find your way there or I look had, at google maps on your phone i look i didn't i had an nv3 i had an nv3 so i didn't have google maps <laughs> on my phone um, likely story and also i have a bad sense of direction and women didn't used to be expected to travel alone <laughs> and these damn feminists well now i, I gotta think... know where i'm going now people expect me to know things like north south east west <laughs> How dare they? I don't know. And they're like, <laughs> I really have no idea. And people are like, it's on the southeast corner of blah, 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 yeah, blah, Yeah, honestly, blah. and in New York City especially, there are definitely ways around actually having to have any of those skills. You can just jump in an Uber and be like, take me to 52nd and Lexington. These crackers are really good, but they're hard to grab out of the box in the we correct position. We should just position. like dump the sleeve out on the table because it's like probably we've where you're headed. A, we've already made a mess. You guys, we've been like drinking <laughs> champagne a little bit it's in okay. case you haven't noticed. some champ and it's, it's all good. I mean, look, I... Your room, your your current roommate. He's 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 cooking a ton of food, right? Oh yeah, he like that's all he does. He like cooks amazing, amazing meals and like counts all of the calories and like weighs out the substances because he's like super fit and he like works out three times a day. And I'm sitting in the corner like in my pajamas that I've been wearing for three days on a weekend, like picking my nose and watching like my twelfth episode of Kimmy Schmidt. I've never seen that. I don't know. I mean, is he forgive I remember one time I left the stove on. He didn't like that very much. <laughs> no. And uh somehow 
We still have the couch. Yeah. Uh, the the legendary the legendary couch that you spilled things all over. I did. I did. I spilled a lot of things all over it. <laughs> um, I don't even know, dude. I just feel like you shouldn't be sleeping on the couch anyway. You should be sleeping in a bed, specifically on a Casper mattress. <laughs> we were talking about this earlier. Yes. Actually, like I I have been looking into Casper because I need a new mattress. I mean, warmer weather is finally here, and that means it's time for spring cleaning. And, you know, you could spend time sprucing up the house or yard, but if you really want a fresh start, do what I did and get a Casper. It's a perfect mattress. It's perfect. It will help you wake up feeling refreshed and ready to fully enjoy this beautiful weather. Time Magazine named it one of the best inventions of 2015. That's pretty <laughs> amazing for a mattress. I love my Casper. Try yours for a hundred nights in your own home with free shipping and returns. Go to Casper.com and use code CAT. K-A-T for 50 bucks towards the purchase of your mattress. That's Casper.com, code K-A-T for $50 towards the purchase of your mattress. I have a funny story to tell you that it's I'm totally related that. to that, actually. Am I getting good at that? Oh, my God, yeah. Okay, you sounded but... like perfect radio voice right there. Thank you. Only a little bit like the guy welcoming people into his van. Mm, yeah, I know. <laughs> That's my general voice. Um, your what... raspy, smoky voice. Oh, I'm going to just eat this yogurt. What was your what was Oh, my your God. Test? So I have to tell you this crazy story. Yes. Nobody listening will find this interesting in any way, but uh -oh. I have to tell it to you. Okay, so you know like how like we're both relatively sort of smart people, but we like cannot do some things. Right. Like we're really stupid. Like right. for you, it's directions. Yes. For me, it's like remembering basic shit. Mm -hmm. So like I literally went shopping the other day to like buy new sheets i bought uh i bought a queen i was like standing there i was like do i have a full or do i have a queen this is the sixth time that i've done this i have brought it home and i actually have a full mattress but i have six queen sheets oh, that no. is like too big and won't actually fit on my bed and and that's all i'll ever have my because i don't duvet. have the skills to remember basic things my duvet doesn't like fit on is that like, how you pronounce it i always thought it was duvet, duvet. i don't care i feel gay when i say the word duvet though it should be duvet I don't know what it is. All I know is that we're going to go to Applebee's after this and get some mozzarella sticks, and I don't give a shit. I, I kind of knew that that's where this was going. This whole, like, Greek yogurt and, like, one little chicken uh, kebab was I'm obviously like, the appetizer. I want some damn chicken. You know what I don't like is that you can never buy one chicken tender. Why would you only want one chicken tender? I don't, but I don't want to be fatty McFat fat. Am I allowed to say that? I don't want to be fat. No, I think that's a good thing. You know like, that? I don't want to be fat. And now there's like this fat acceptance movement and fat celebration movement. I mean, everybody should celebrate their bodies and think that they're pretty. I don't think everyone should celebrate is. their bodies. I mean, this not is the kind all of shit the time. That, yes, this is the kind like... of shit that me and your 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 liberal ass <laughs> lie about. No, okay. no, no. Let me finish. So, background. If you are obese and you are smoking a pack a day and you are eating cholesterol like to the point where you're like waddling around, you are raising my insurance premiums and it is up. <laughs> It is, I have a personal investment in not being okay with you being that fat. You shouldn't be proud of being Yeah, but that really Ill. has nothing to do with you. Like somebody's uh, healthy or unhealthy uh, habits. And sure, I'll share and my insurance premium. It's not necessarily like, it, there's a big difference payments. between like health and body type too. Like you can, you can have like, I have, I'm from a Polish family. Um, me my, too. my, somehow my dad and my mom were like the two skinny people in their family. Everybody else is like just a little bit bigger. They're like Polish. They have like huge, huge thighs. And I'm like, Polish and I have, and I mean, like, I'm a little. I have my favorite cousin. She's amazing. She's a fitness instructor. She's got the best body on the planet, but her thighs are like bigger than my waist. Yeah, my lower half of my body is definitely bigger. And that's the thing. Like she's I weighed, perfectly healthy. I weigh more in she college. could snap me in half, but like, what? What would you have to say to her about her body? It's too big. I'm not telling. No, you. That's not what I'm talking about, and you know it. I'm not talking about like, oh, you don't weigh a hundred pounds. Well, I spit on you. I'm talking about this thing where people are clearly obese and unhealthy, and I'm not allowed to say so. I don't necessarily think that that has a whole lot to do with you. I think it does. I think it does because you know what. And I'm also, sure like, not everything needs to be like an instructive teaching moment for you to like show up somebody who's actually fat. Like, I'm not. You saying, don't know I'm not, I'm not trying to show them up. I don't care really what they do, just because I guess I don't know them well enough to care about their health, really. Um, however, if you're celebrating, I'm gonna say that's dumb. Sure. I, 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 okay. I can. You can judge without really caring. But there's also like a portion of that that like is just institutionalized in Who people's is brain. The that last like, obese somehow... person you have slept with. I mean, that's a ridiculous <laughs> question. I would just... none. Oh, fattest McFattest over here. I'm not. Why are you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying that I'm like a skinniest. I'm saying that like you can't like judge people for the amount of space that they take up in the world because you don't know their lives. Um, I can say that you shouldn't celebrate having any kind of dis disease. Yeah, but like not everybody has a disease just because they're overweight. 
Obesity is a disease. It's killing people. I'm sorry. Maybe I'm just very compassionate. Let me twist <laughs> this on you. Let me okay. Trump. Let me Donald Trump you for a second. Oh, compassionate liberal Joel doesn't care if they die. I would say lose weight so you can have a healthier heart. I don't really think that's my responsibility. Um, conservative yeah. libertarian. I'm not conservative Catherine. libertarian. I think it's. I think it's I, their saying, personal I, responsibility that has it, nothing to do with ever, me to take care of themselves. I, I um. I love these crackers. <laughs> <laughs> everyone yelled at me last week. Well, not everyone. One guy on Twitter for like hacking into the microphone. I like almost died of a sickness. Um, yeah, I mean, we've been eating food this whole time. So I really hope that people are getting like really tender notes from our like disgusting mouths of like everything that we're chowing down on. It's but it's okay. brunch. It's brunch. Cheers. It's brunch. Cheers. And we're not we're not overweight. And you know what? If you're <laughs> overweight, oh my God. I, I still like you as long as you're funny. <laughs> I'm just kidding, kind of. <laughs> um, am I going to get in big trouble? I really hope so. I mean, but what does it matter? There's going to be like three eggs squawking at you on Twitter. I don't know, but I'm going to lick this yogurt off of the crackers. <laughs> off oh. of a cracker sleeve? Nah. Stuff is getting really, really real in this studio it's, right it now. Is, it is. Look. <laughs> um, I I feel like, you know what? But I don't, I, I, it's okay. I don't care if people make fun of me. I don't care. I mean, if people I mean, everybody me, kind of should have a little bit thicker skin okay, than they do have today. Saying. Like a I, lot of people, I do think that like there's a lot of, there's, I work at a place called Mike, which is mm -hmm. uh, an awesome website that everybody should check out, mike.com. It's mm -hmm. a website that serves 30 million young readers a month. It's awesome. Really awesome writers talking about news and uh, talking about like perspectives for young people in the world. Um, one of the things that we report on a lot is like um, kind of campus protesters and people basically being like, in my mind, very oversensitive about basic problems yeah. that like aren't a big deal um and i think uh i don't know it depends on the campus obviously and the issue but I, yeah. people need to chill out and actually just understand that not everything is about them that's what it boils down to like it's not about you i understand that um you know i'm probably a little less sense like i had those like when i made that star wars joke people were threatening to rape and murder me and i like didn't care yeah i mean i was like Meh. you have to have a crazy thick skin also but like actually like reading hate on the internet like does have an emotional toll not on me. I'm like, thanks for watching. Keep watching. Yeah, you just, I mean, you have to have a thick skin doing what you do. Yeah, well, you know what? But the one thing that scared me is when they started saying they were going to hack into my eye cloud. Yeah, that's crazy. I was like, please not until my dad dies. Do you think your skin's <laughs> gotten thicker? Because, like, I've known you for a really long time. We're really close, and I feel like you're the same person on some levels. But, like, also I feel like you've gotten a little bit, like, you've come up with some skills to have to deal with that. Like, when we were going to a party the other day, I literally stood on one side of the street and watched you, like, get stopped by people. Um, like a couple of times <laughs> yeah. so they could like be like, Hey, it's Kat from Fox news. Yeah. And w meanwhile, I was like on the other side of the street being like, you're making us late for this party, which like wasn't a big deal. It was yeah. like kind of funny to watch, but like those skills that you actually have to develop that aren't are crazy smile. for anybody else that you have to like actually have yeah, random that's... strangers stop you in the street and be like, and be nice to them. And like, yeah, I mean, it's still something that's like really exciting for me. Um, I really just don't like when people ask me for selfies when I look ugly because <laughs> I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. Like I'll post. That's like the new autograph though, right? It's just like taking a selfie with someone know, like whip out your camera. I, I'll, I, I mean, I post, which I don't really know why, because I'll post, there are plenty of unattractive pictures of me that I post of myself on my Instagram. Like I don't. Yeah, just my, because they're like funny or like, something, or you're like eating nine pounds of cheese. And you're like, yeah. I, I I have no like I I, I don't I, like I found out recently that um by posting and a, a picture without makeup on, I'm a feminist hero. <laughs> That's like it just makes me a feminist hero instead of somebody who's just too lazy to put on makeup when she's not at work. Or so do you TV. think you're like the opposite of the oversensitive people? You like actually can't be bothered? I can't be bothered by people on the internet that I don't know. I'm very, I can be very sensitive with, with the ones that I love. I think it's probably yeah. wise. I also think that there's this game being played by a lot of people and like writers and thinkers on the internet that's like a gotcha game. Like if you get there first and you like get somebody being problematic and you like write it up, like somehow you win like these fake internet points. Yeah. That is like, that is doing something for you. I don't know what it's supposed to be doing for you, but I feel like that's like a game that like the hot take media is is playing a lot um, i'm a major part of the hot take media um hot takes coming at you since <laughs> 1989 when i learned to talk only six months after i was born they're beautiful and genuinely hilarious for the most part 99.9 .9 of the time mm. i think though like if you're if you're um getting offended by something on the internet you're actually like what you're saying is that you don't have the emotional control that an adult should have right. that they're able to like tell themselves that that doesn't have anything I mean, to do also, with them. Like the internet is a very upsetting place. Yeah. You can watch videos of you people killing themselves. You, want. Yeah. you can watch sometimes if you get one letter long in a web address next thing you know, you're watching like two old guys blow each other, you know, like it's like, Nobody it's, wants it's, that. you gotta be careful on the internet. Everybody knows that or like get off the internet. Yeah. Or just like come up with strategies to deal with it yourself like an adult and yeah. don't like, 
it's not somebody else's fault is I guess what I'm trying to say. It's, it's like, it's your yeah, business. It really is. I just, ugh. are you Joel? I mean, come on. Do you have plans tonight? Are we going to continue to hang out? <laughs> I think obviously. I think we're going to have to continue to hang out because you know what? Um, you know what though? But this, you know what? My Sunday app, why does Uber email you, uh, when you get your receipts? Like, I don't, I don't want to see it. I don't check my <laughs> bank account. I'm like, I have enough. I enjoy it a lot because I have to like, a lot of times like expense cars because I'm always like working late and taking them home. But, uh, and then I just like, what's your Uber rating? I'm going to check mine. <laughs> Oh my right God, now. if you never looked before, I'm super pissed off about my Uber rating. Actually, this is like such a white New York, like yeah. millennial like thing to actually even care about. So I apologize about this in the first place. But like, I'm really, really upset that I have a four star, not a five star Uber rating because I'm always very, very nice. And I'm always like talking to my Uber drivers. And yeah, I'm, like, but you get hammered. I do. That, like, yeah, <laughs> okay, but, like the, the whole all thing. All the times you can I get remember very having all the time. an That's Uber. That's true. I get so hammered that Cat has a special name for me. Hurricane Candy. It only happens a couple times a year, but when yeah. it does- it is actually a hurricane. Yeah. I think your favorite story to tell about me is that saxophone one when it I was, was like ridiculous. full hurricane. Well, that was when I first, and this was when Hurricane Sandy, because I call him Jay Candy. It's my nickname for him. Hurricane Sandy had just happened, so calling him Hurricane Candy was very topical. <laughs> a little controversial, perhaps. <laughs> no, but <laughs> you got so- Your nickname's problematic. We were, well, we were at this party with like fashion girls. And oh, so yeah. you were, of course, fit in great. I did not. You smoked a cigarette in somebody's room and everyone was like, <laughs> yelled at me to stop smoking cigarettes in there. And I'm like, I didn't, I didn't. It yeah, was him. I was gone. But, but we went to this party and God, and, and, and then we, we had to leave because you were so drunk. Yeah. You were so drunk and we hopped into a cab to go somewhere else. I assumed you had another destination. And you asked I, me where we were heading. And I was like, where are we heading? And then so and he's like, oh, right here. And we're like in the middle of nowhere. And we we went like two blocks in this cab. There's a, there's a homeless <laughs> man there playing the trumpet. It was a saxophone, sax wasn't it? It was a saxophone. I do not it remember this, saxophone. but people told me it was a saxophone. Yeah, well, it was just me. That's what I'm saying. That's what I was saying. <laughs> so so it, it was horrible. It was like... I know, like, I got was, out of the cab. It was clearly a stall. You get out of the cab, we're like, here we are. I'm like, where are we going? And you, you were like... Why do? Why would you ever want to go anywhere? We're already so here. You were start dancing. I literally, start dancing. This guy playing the saxophone on the street corner. And then you tried to give him two hundred dollars in cash. Yeah, out of my and wallet. I, was, I tried to give him all the money in my wallet. I said no, and you got very mad. <laughs> and I was like, "Holy!" I was shit. really clearly enjoying this guy's jam. Well, and then this was four in the morning, and I was like, "Joel, we have, we're, we're going home." I was home. really appreciative of we're him bringing home. art and, and music like, into New York City and, for me and you were personally. Like, no, on that I'm street not. Corner. We're going to Eastern Block. I'm going to find a guy. I'm going to find a dude. I'm like, it's they're closed. It's like. It was like, like 4.30, 4 5 o'clock in the yeah. morning. Yeah. They're closed. And you were like, ah. like what? You're like, when are you just going to be okay with the fact that I'm gay? I'm like, it's not the issue. So we were walking around. This is like dead. Like we just like drove into somewhere Where dead. Where were only, we? I it don't was, know. Was I, like I was a, visiting from D.C. I, I should not have yeah, been Yeah, you control. didn't even like have context to understand this in New York at the time at all. Yeah. No. And so we, we finally found like a, like, a, like a street with cabs on it. I'm hailing a cab. And you're like, No. And I'm like, what? I'm like, what? And you're like, I don't like those calves. <laughs> and I was like, nope. And I hit you. I used, I physically hit you. You used physical force. It was absolutely Assaulted necessary. Me. And and I, I, I assaulted you. I did. I, uh, I did assault you. And we got the cab. We go back, get back to your place. And God, you just weren't done. I was like, you want to put on some South Park something? Go to bed. He's like, you, you were like, do you want to watch Eternal Sunshine, The Spotless Mind? I'm, like, <laughs> I'm the worst person on the planet like, when no, I get into that I state. Absolutely like, can do you imagine not. like a douchier, more horrible no, suggestion? at that moment of something to do. And I was no. like, no. And you were like, oh. I'm like, what? You're like, you never want to do anything fun. <laughs> <laughs> like watch a turtle sunshine of the spot. That's fine. not fun. No, I think I need to like have a note that like I, I give to every one of my friends for when them you're... to carry around that is written by me when I'm sober so that but like to future me when I'm yeah. drunk so that they can just give it to me and it says go to bed. Yeah. Or just like something that's like stop talking like go yeah. to sleep or like when you got really <laughs> when you got really drunk in front of my dad that was great too when you that wasn't when, too long ago that was this yeah that was this summer this I'm, okay summer. we're making me sound like a real alcoholic you're a very successful wonderful person it happens to everybody <laughs> and at least with you it's like funny okay i'd rather deal with this than like a puker yeah that's true you know, yeah and, or like and, a pass outer or like a yeah, crier. A or crier, like a, yeah, yeah. I can be a crier. I've you can, been a you crier. can sometimes once or twice, but it's okay. I love you anyway. Yeah, I love you too. <laughs> well, that was when you were trying to convince 
uh, my roommate that Horton hears a who was about um, women not being allowed to have abortions. I was, yeah, no, which is maybe the exact opposite of how like, Doctor Seuss meant that. I book, don't understand. I, think. I don't think that Horton hears a who. Like, I think it's about like. And the your who's. dad was in the corner, <laughs> yeah. not just rolling his eyes at me, but like actively looking at everyone else in the group and being like, "Who's this? Well, I don't who's even, this schmuck? I don't know what your argument was. I your just dad know. is the coolest person on the planet. Oh, I want to be him. He's like, amazing. No, he's awesome. He, he's very, very tolerant. <laughs> Dan Tim. Wasn't he on your podcast just a couple of weeks ago? You guys yeah. should go back and listen to that episode. It's probably it was me and my dad and Ben Kessel. It was great. That guy's lived a life. Absolutely. Oh my god, he has. Oh, and then you were mad. You went to get an Uber home that night. My dad was there, and like they were paying, and you got very angry because they were taking too long, and you thought it was on purpose. But they oh, like they yeah. like they like had to pay <laughs> for the cab. Yeah. So okay, you know we all get angry sometimes. We all get sassy sometimes. Yeah, some of us um, just combine it with massive amounts of alcohol. And sometimes that'll happen also. But the thing about that is just like the internet. If 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 Hurricane Candy is being mean to me, I realize that that's not you. Yeah, right. But I think that makes you even more mad. You have emotional mad. maturity to understand like where that's actually coming from. It does make me more mad. Because you know, it I doesn't, don't it does, care. It's not me, first of all. It's yeah. Hurricane Candy. It right, makes right, Hurricane right. Ma Candy so mad when he can't like impact someone or like yeah. ruin their day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if like If like you won't let... Hurricane Candy like upset you or yeah. or on the other side sometimes it's funny and like yeah. make you laugh or like cheer you up like he gets really upset yeah oh like in Vegas when you were like <laughs> you just like hated me and I you know I oh that's gonna be one of the things that's gonna have to stay in Vegas though you, well no you just kept walking through and be like why why are you here I'm like Cause, <laughs> because I invited you on this trip <laughs> so so that's why I'm here and that I, was incredible and you were like <laughs> <laughs> I just remember. You texting me and being like, there's wontons floating in the jacuzzi. <laughs> what happened last night? Apparently I tried to do wontons in the jacuzzi. I probably thought it'd be funny to make the jacuzzi a wonton soup. And then I realized, good God, That's don't go to ridiculous. Vegas for five days. Oh my God. No, never, ever do that. That's a horrible suggestion. Where are we going next? We have to plan like know. our next trip. I need to trip. go on another vacation. I, I really need a vacation. It should probably be somewhere that like isn't going to kill you if you stay there for five days. No, I got this Greek yogurt body going on, which is good, right? Body by <laughs> Greek yogurt. Yeah. And uh, I really want to go to everybody's saying like go to uh vietnam Holy, cambodia that sounds tough that sounds fun you want to ride an elephant let's ride an elephant i mean also there's another one of the things that i learned from that essay that the guy at the new york times wrote about is that you have to plan your vacations ahead of time so that you have something to look forward to so you don't get too stressed out when you work too hard I'm i know this stressed. about myself because i'm a workaholic i'm a workaholic too i'm into everything i've ever tried a holic uh, yeah <laughs> like that's everything true I've tried you once, can't do like, anything yeah. in moderation no i can't i think that you and i are actually very similar in that but you're way worse than i am at it i i, I either like <laughs> don't eat for an entire day or i like eat all day long everything I all don't day, everything sleep, you see or i sleep for 15 hours yeah, yeah. no like or like a party becomes an absolute marathon or yeah, like whatever it is i know where i work i'm like sitting as how if do people I were learn Santa moderation Claus. is that a, is that a life skill that you just get like on the day you turn 30 i think it's i think it's dumb i think moderation is dumb i wouldn't think i would be successful yeah no honestly i, I think wouldn't have made also, as many mistakes but it's a no but like honestly the only way i learn anything ever is by making mistakes i think you're mm -hmm. probably similar like mm -hmm. i can't learn by somebody telling me something i no. have to make a mistake and that sucks because it's more public and like people notice and you sometimes look like an asshole but like yeah you have to get your hands dirty and actually like learn from doing some dumb shit hands dirty <laughs> i don't even know what's going on i mean i do i do know what's going on we ate some yogurt we drank some champagne we, we probably had some delicious too chicken much, too much personal information about yeah a lot i hope you edit it all out no we're not gonna edit it all out <laughs> because you know what this is um 2016 and now it's all about un unabashed self-acceptance I actually and think that, that, <laughs> that we can have a little bit less of that. you can't be accepting of my unacceptance of people killing themselves with cheeseburgers, then <laughs> who are you to judge? Oh, my God. That's such, a, that's such a, like, skinny, blonde, pretty girl thing to say, though. Um, I exercise. I do yoga Same, while I'm watching. But I have also, like, have never in my entire life had to worry about the caloric content of something that I put in my body because I have a great metabolism. I understand that I'm blessed I in that way. I was a little thicker in college. I had the body of a rap star's girlfriend. Yeah, but, like, I not had, everybody like, my looks butt, like my that. My butt was huge. I never had a gut, but my butt. Remember my butt? 
Yes. The Polish anchor. Yes, that, there was, was a lot. Oh, you know where that pierogi? Pro- we go? called it the badonk. Yeah, it was, it was ridiculous. A badonk. It was, but I still had these ch- these arms. <laughs> the SpongeBob like, arms. That's why I, I can't get. I can't do that again because it's like it's like I have like the kind of body that'd be like interesting to be an Instagram model. Yeah. Like and by and, and we all know that's not a job. So like um. You also, know. it's so weird that both you and I like combine like very deep insecurities about some things on our body with like massive self confidence, like yeah. uncalled for self confidence. Oh sometimes. my gosh! I'm either I either hate. It or I, or I love Sometimes it. you just have to fake it until you actually feel it, I feel like. I think so too, but I'm just saying that it's okay. I mean, I, I do I do I work out every morning. I do a little yoga in my living yeah. room while watching Sixteen and Pregnant, <laughs> which or Teen Mom Two. I know that that is true. Which people say is like missing the point of yoga, but honestly, I've never felt more like gratitude <laughs> than when I'm watching these wimp these girls. Every episode is the same and I'm still entertained. The beginning they're like my parents just don't understand that just because I'm going to have this baby doesn't mean that <laughs> I can't do everything I want to do. And like Joshua's going to be there for me. And then like the end of the episode, this oh is much harder than I thought. <laughs> and then Joshua's off in the South on a shrimp boat. That happened in the last <laughs> one I want. His name was Blake, actually. Oh, my God. His name was the, Blake. He like- left the family two weeks after the birth to go on a shrimp boat. I really, really envy him. That kind of moxie. <laughs> I really envy him that. <coughs> oh, there's a cough. I'm never going to be the same again. I mean... We all love our trashy TV shows, though. You and I, the only thing that we do when we get together is watch dumb early Modern Family episodes. I love it. It's so good. And I didn't watch it for so long because it has such a dumb name. Yeah, same. And I was just like, oh, oh, yeah, they're like two gay Ooh, dads. Butterfield- and they're like yeah. one of the families and they're like equal and everybody's happy together. Like, sure, whatever. But it's got it good just seemed one-liners. like it was pandering and I never, ever gave it a chance. Yeah. But then I did and it was really, really smartly written. Go yeah, watch Modern it Family. Really, it really is. Yeah, we should all... <laughs> What are we? What are we gonna do after this? We gonna go to my apartment? You know, honestly, go to Applebee's. What do you I, do? I have a ton of work to do, but I'm not gonna do it. We're gonna maybe right, yeah. go get another bottle of champagne. Mm-hmm. Um, we are we're definitely gonna go to an Applebee's and eat some cheese sticks. Uh huh. Um, because I love nothing in the entire world more than cheese. Yeah. Obviously, I'm from Wisconsin. Cheese is my life. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Other people were like, cat, like asking me like to like hang out tonight. Um, I can tell you more about who and later <laughs> some stories, but um. I'm like, I'm Joel's on my podcast, and whenever I'm with him, I don't want to leave him. So what we're going to do is continue to drink, and we're going to just compliment each other constantly. <laughs> You're my favorite person. I think that's I love really you. what a best friend is designed to do right? for you. I think that is making you feel like your best version of yourself. Well, you call me a moron if, uh, if necessary. Oh, yeah, I absolutely slap uh, some real dumb shit out of you. I think uh, not you have, metaphorically, not no, physically, obviously, hit me but one like, time, but it's okay. That we're is like, not true. A little bit. I would never. I'm, I'm maybe I just, <laughs> you know, had dreams about it. All right, everybody. That's you know, that's we're. I think we're done here. Um, I think we we've uh, exercised everything, and if I keep going, then I might share more about myself. Yeah, I might get really, really real. Than I intend to. So uh, we've probably already like said things gonna we're going to regret cheating. on this thing. Yeah, it's yeah. A, dude. Everything I say, I regret. <laughs> um, and and this is yeah, Joel. This is meant you know. Hopefully, maybe this will help with people on the. Um, Instagram, as my dad oh, calls yeah, it. Oh, yeah, totally. Being like, Hey, guys, follow us on Twitter. <laughs> yeah, yeah, follow him on Twitter, <laughs> at Joel Sifer. Like yeah, it's Lucifer, like Lucifer, but Your mom Joel had a Sifer. really hard time. My mom really hates that, but honestly, it was just a nickname that our mutual friend Kate gave me that mm-hmm. like just sounded good. I'm sure she didn't actually want to call me Satan, but it just yeah. sounded good. Oh, by the way, I don't get this whole Ted Cruz is Satan thing, because I always feel like Satan should be like sexy, right? Like, <laughs> evil incarnate is like sexy and I just and love that John Boner is like, <laughs> is like, not giving any shit. He crushed at all. it with Obama in that thing last oh, night. Oh, I believe it. Was it. So funny. I didn't watch it yet, but I can't wait. I watched like a brief clip of Obama's speech and him dropping the mic. And honestly, like, stop trying to be cool. Yeah, I know. I, you know, you know, I like Obama. Like, I'm sad that he's actually leaving office. Hey. I know we may might not agree about that, but no. like, I I really hate that he's like dropping a microphone at the White House Correspondents' Dinner and trying that to be cool. That little smug, little smart. It's like we get it. Cool. All right, we're done. We're gonna continue to have these. Um, Although he, he did have that really, really great dig at Hillary that was actually hilarious about how she's like the aunt who tries to friend you on Facebook. I know, but that was <laughs> sexist because you're not allowed to talk about women's age, only men. Uh, women are never old. Oh, wait, old ladies are old, and she's an old lady. She's an old lady. She's, Everybody running for president is old. It's I can't fine. wait to be old. I'm going to crush 90. You know what? Honestly, I think I'm going to like hit my peak at like 34, so I can't wait for that, but I don't think either of us are going to make it past 45. <laughs> I don't think so either. It's just a matter of which one of us is going to die first. I really, really hope that it is like at the same moment holding hands. It probably will be, and it'll probably be like something that we could have prevented had we not been. Oh yeah, absolutely and it's going to be idiots. it's going to be something that like people will laugh at at our funerals. Oh my god, it's going to be amazing. I, I just people want- are just going to be like those dumbasses. We knew it. 
it. <laughs> I just wrote happy birthday, Hen Hen, on my friend Henry's wall. And I don't know if that's weird. Um, I think it is. So, um, all right, everybody. Thank you so much for listening. Look, I don't care if you love me. I don't care if you hate me. I do care whether or not you rate me five stars and subscribe because that makes my life better and it takes no effort on your part. And we live in a cruel, cruel world. So if you ever have the opportunity to do something like that, you should do it. All right. Thanks, Joel. Do it or somebody will call you problematic. Do it. Bye.